fellow Southern Cameroonians, fellow Ambazonians, I bring you revolutionary greetings from the Southern Cameroon's Liberation Council, the SCLC. I'm bringing to you the content of an important press release that has been issued today by the SCLC with respect to the action of La Republic du Cameroon denying entry into the country for the officials of the international non-governmental organization Human Rights Watch. That delegation intended to visit the conflict areas and to have first-hand knowledge of the human rights abuses ongoing there as the genocide being perpetrated by La Republic du Cameroon is unfolding. I bring you the content of this very important press release. It is titled Human Rights Watch Denied Entry to Report Ongoing Genocide in Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia. The Southern Cameroon's Liberation Council, SCLC, has learned with dismay that the regime of President Paul Bia of the Republic of Cameroon has denied entry into that country by a delegation from the New York based rights group Human Rights Watch. Immigration officers, at the Douala International Airport in the country's economic capital gave no reason for the decision except to state that they were acting on instructions from our top hierarchy, that is in quotes. Human Rights Watch team members who all had valid visas obtained for the expressed purpose of reporting on the situation of human rights in the country have since boarded another flight out of the Cameroons. The SCLC has learned from sources in Douala and at the Human Rights Watch office in New York that denial of entry was triggered by an itinerary showing that rights defenders from Human Rights Watch intended to travel to and investigate rights violations in what has hitherto been considered the English-speaking part of the country. The sovereign people of this territory with internationally recognized boundaries since the Treaty of Assels proclaimed the breakaway Republic of Ambazonia on 1st October 2017. Two months later, on 30th November 2017, Mr. Bia declared war on independence campaigners describing them as secessionists and terrorists. Human Rights Watch monitors arrived Douala en route to the conflict zone, and that is where the genocidal violence has so far left no fewer than 10,000 people killed or maimed with more than 120,000 people who have fled into exile in refugee camps in neighboring Nigeria. No fewer than 2 million people are internally displaced in what the UN has described as the biggest mass displacement crisis in Africa. Human Rights Watch, of course, is not the first victim of denial of entry into the Republic of Cameroon. The highly secretive de facto military regime of which Mr. Paul Bia is just a civilian facet has thrice denied entry visas to monitors from the United Nations Human Rights Council. It has twice denied entry visas to rights monitors from Amnesty International. In addition, the regime has collected donations in humanitarian assistance from many sources, including from its own citizens of goodwill, but has refused to distribute any such assistance to the internally displaced persons who face starvation in makeshift sanctuaries in bushes and forests. Furthermore, the regime continues to restrict access to convoys bringing in humanitarian assistance. Its British, force, uh, its British forces have burned down hospitals, attacked and killed hospital staff on suspicions they may be offering health care to injured pro-independence fighters. To further the impunity that is a hallmark of the regime and shout everything in secrecy, even diplomats and officials from international organizations visiting the country, including teams from the U.S. State Department, the Commonwealth of Nations, the World Bank, and journalists from media outlets like the Washington Post have also been denied access to the war zone. The Washington Post was left with no choice than to complete a video documentary on Ambazonia without setting foot on the territory and including no excerpts of interviews by leaders of the pro-independence movement. Denial of entry is an admission by the trigger-happy, bloodthirsty regime that its colonial forces are violating the Geneva Conventions relating to the conduct of soldiers in armed conflict. 
Many amateur videos posted on social media document some of these horrors of war in Amazonia. On Friday, the 12th of April 2019, rice farmers in Bafut Mezam Division of the Northwest were ruthlessly killed on their farms by a contingent of the Elite Force B. Tens of women, children, and the very old who were working on their crops were massacred in the operation. This campaign of mass murder of unarmed civilians must stop. In shutting the door on rights monitors from the United Nations Human Rights Council and from groups, groups like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, the BIA regime hopes to conceal the atrocious crimes, war crimes and crimes bordering on genocide being perpetrated against unarmed civilians, notably young boys, the elderly, women and children. The SCLC calls on the United Nations to recognize that continued silence by the UN the UN Security Council, the African Union, and others on the ongoing genocidal violence in Ambazonia is tacit approval of the crimes being committed by the regime. The SCLC calls on the United Nations to send a preventive humanitarian mission to Ambazonia without further delay so as to arrest the unfolding of another Rwanda-type genocide under their watch. The SCLC is the largest coalition of liberation movements seeking the independence of the former UN Trust Territory of the Southern Cameroons. That said, with that uh, release that has been issued today, the SCLC also wishes to let all Southern Cameroonians, wherever they may be, to know that in the days ahead, the subcommittees created within the framework of the Memorandum of Understanding binding the organizations that are operating under this uh, framework will be putting in place all the subcommittees, that those subcommittees will be put in place, and these subcommittees are Rehabilitation, Relief and Refugees, Political and Public Affairs, Orientation and Information Subcommittee, Diplomacy and International Outreach, Strategic Thinking and Mobilization, and then Finance and Logistics. As of finance and logistics, which falls within the ambit of the ARF, that particular committee has already been constituted and they will, in the days ahead, be having their first meeting to put in place everything that is required to make the unique account that will enable us better finance this revolution, get fully operational. And so we are going to be getting the best of the brains in Southern Cameroon's we don't care. That is the message from the SCLC, whether you are affiliated to any of our organizations or not. As long as you have something to offer, you will be considered within these subcommittees because we want to get the best brains from the Southern Cameroons to make sure that we give a greater response to La République du Cameroon and their allies who to continue to think that the only way to get a solution to our problem will be within a certain Cameroon. This is the moment for us to come together and indicate to the world that they must begin to look for a solution to this crisis as a territorial problem. That is the message that is coming to you from the SCLC. And then just this little quip now from me just before I go, just at this moment as we are recording this message, there is pandemonium attitude in Yaoundé because of the serious confusion that has engulfed that particular institution. A lot of documents appear to have been carted out by we don't know who, and that has set the whole place ablaze as the people no longer know exactly what is going to become of their system in the days ahead. These are clear signs that we are on the right trajectory. And it is important for all Southern Cameroonians, all Ambazonians of goodwill to continue to support all our efforts that will gear towards ensuring that we work together, that all the groups work together within the framework of this solid collaboration platform we have put in, in place to ensure that we shorten our journey to Boya. Stay blessed.